Hey there. Thanks for joining us for our Be Encouraged moment. We're so excited that you listen and hopefully share these videos with your friends. We love that you're here with us. Yes. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about upgrades. Um, okay. We all do upgrades, right? Yeah. Life is full of upgrades. We upgrade our phone, our wardrobe, our uh, renovations for our house, cars, hairstyles. Food. Let, let me tell <laughs> you that um, I'm not really even sure why we do a lot of that. Because if you're like me and lived back in the 70s, those were the styles back then. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're back. I mean, I even heard the other day that um, shoulder pads were back in. I'm there's, like, there's no, I no. don't think so. They That's, shouldn't have been around then, let alone yeah, now. <laughs> forget it. No. But anyways, it got me thinking, why do we do upgrades? And how about upgrading our lives? Ooh. What does that look like and how do we do that? Well, I'm going to go through three different areas that Jesus teaches us how to upgrade our lives. The first, he says, is to become a servant. Matthew 20, 26 says, Anyone wa wanting to be great among you must first become a servant. But a servant's not an upgrade, is Yeah, it? I know. You think that... A servant is like a, a doormat where everybody just walks over you and they just meet your every need. And um, that's not what Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. He wants us to serve others versus being served all the time. So maybe we need to look deeper into what a servant is about and, and how do we do that? I want to tell you when I was at a really dark time in my life, years and years ago when my son Brandon died, um, I just couldn't see two feet in front of me, let alone trying to live out a whole day. My house was becoming filthy dirty with these little um, fur balls of dust everywhere. My bathrooms, well, we just won't. We won't go there. We won't go there. That's gross. So <laughs> I, I didn't even know where my vacuum was to, you know, and it was just in the hall closet. But it was a really hard time and I couldn't see what I needed to do. One day my doorbell rang and I went to the door and there was this lovely lady with her daughter from our church and she had a little caddy filled with cleaning materials, clean sprays and um, bottles of stuff and toilet brushes and and then she also had her vacuum and I'm like what are you doing here <laughs> I, I'm not sure I understand and she's like I'm here to clean your house I'm like okay you can clean all of this but that bathroom back there you can stay away from oh no no she wouldn't take that she wanted to clean everything and I'll tell you, that meant so much to me. When we're going through something really difficult and somebody reaches out to serve you in that way, that was, you'll never forget that, ever. And there was what you needed. Uh, absolutely. And there was another instance where I had surgery and I couldn't lift my arms over my head and my hair, it had been like three days and my hair was getting really gross and it really needed to be washed but I couldn't I couldn't do this so my hair salon stylist she called me up and she's like Jan I want to wash your hair can you come down here and I'm like yes <laughs> so I drove over I immediately dropped what I was doing and I drove there and she was out of the kindness of her heart she washed my hair for me and that just meant a great deal so Sometimes when we're going through tough times, we remember those things. And I want to encourage you, if you're in those tough times, allow people to come in and serve you. Yeah. So that's the first thing that our Lord told us. The second thing is to love others. First John 3.11 says, The message from the beginning has always been that we should love others one another yeah. and I think we all know that but to actually do that and sometimes we might go out and I've been guilty of this is to just love someone just so that I could check tick tick that box and uh, I'm done but and that's, there are some people that are hard yeah, to love <laughs> very hard but that's not the love he's he's talking about he wants us to love others with compassion yeah 
have that compassion to help them, to love them. Don't just serve, but serve with love and compassion. And then the third part, the third area that our Lord helps us to understand is found in 1 Peter 5, 6. And he tells us to humble ourselves and then God will lift us up. So in essence, here we go back to the beginning. God is the one that gives us our life upgrades. So you don't mean you're just doing it to brag about no. it? No. Oh. Okay. So, <laughs> no. Here are three don'ts. Don't advertise your good works on social media because I'm telling you, social media is not what humility is all about <laughs> at all. Hmm. Don't tell everyone the great things that you've done. Yeah. And don't have an agenda because when you have an agenda for someone, they're going to see that. They're going to know you're just doing that to get, you know, a whatever, a stone in your crown or whatever. Um, stone, a jewel, jewel, <laughs> jewel in your pocket. Whatever Brad, that's bragging privilege. Brad, yeah, no. The people know that. So do it as, as something that's real and really compassionate. So here we go. Upgrading our lives is simply serving and loving others with humility. Yeah. Those three things. I really encourage you to seek out how you can serve someone, how you can love them with compassion and do it with humility. How can you upgrade your life this month? Mm. Thank you for joining us for our Be Encouraged Moments. Thank you.